What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Creature Cast, the official console creatures podcast. I'm your host today, Steve Vegvari, and alongside me, my good pal, Dave. How, how the heck are you? I'm Long good, man. Here. I know. I know. We uh, we chatted a couple weeks ago, and yep. uh, I was worried that it would be another longer stretch that I wasn't able to make it, but, uh, but things worked out, and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be talking a, a variety of things this week because um it's been a long time since i've been on a proper episode with you fellas so <laughs> that's right yeah yeah, yeah this, this is nice though i mean we like we talked about a couple weeks ago or whatever you know the the windows of opportunity dwindling down more and more yes. is uh the sands of time you know escape our palms so might as well might as well take advantage of it and yeah the, the last time yeah. we talked was for that uh, preview of prince of per the rogue prince of persia mm -hmm. uh, so that was a fun episode everyone should go check that out if uh, that game interested you at all um yeah we were pretty high on it at least yeah definitely it, uh, it kind of gave me a, a, an itch to uh, to try and find or revisit games that are like that Interesting. i did not yeah. i did not pull up dead cells because we used that as a as a comparison for quite a quite a bit of uh, things that were in there because the developer helped put together a lot of the the dlc for dead cells itself mm -hmm. or did uh create the like the castlevania one for example and stuff so like there's a lot of shared dna and i was like ooh what do I, should, should I should I play Dead Cells? Should I, I've already put like sixty hours into Dead Cells over the last several years. Uh, find something else. I haven't I haven't gotten there yet, but there's something. There's some, there's an itch there that it that it got me interested in sort of finding something similar. So yeah, um, yeah. and it, yeah, and it's something to keep an eye on because that game is early access when this episode comes out within a month, roughly. I think yeah. it's end of May, mid May that there's going to be early access. So um, yeah, I'm ex uh, I'm as still thinking about that game and it was only a half hour hands-on so it's it's pretty it impressed me it impressed me for sure but uh, yeah our full thoughts are on that on that episode from just a couple weeks ago so yeah yeah um, everyone go yeah. check that out if uh, if you want how have you been otherwise you keeping keeping busy things good yeah doing lots around the house lots of organizing for when uh for when the little uh, little guy arrives in uh less than two months now holy um, so yeah so it's not that we don't have space it's not like we don't have the extra like bedroom where we're where you know where it's eventually going to be the baby's room or the kid's room and stuff it's just when you move things from one room to another or one closet to another you have to create space in that other area so it's right. like I've built a couple shelves I've moved some stuff to the garage and out of the garage and this I put in a bin here and, a bit, and it's it's a lot it's a lot of work but uh it's you know just how it goes i'm not going to complain because i'm excited so yeah it's, it'll yeah. be worth it I, in the end exactly that's what i've been doing mostly with my extra time if i'm not working or gaming that is pretty much what i'm doing yeah um, and it's and it's taken up a lot of time and energy but it's all good it's all for the better good. so love yeah. that yeah. and uh we've also got bobby in the building right now hey -o. i'm here uh -oh. hello all three yeah. of us are here uh oh <laughs> yeah this never happens i Oh god. my god! I'm just <laughs> struggling here. How's how's the? It's like where's the the camera half? What's the? Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, oh, no. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no! We lost them. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm coming. Jeez, Louise! Can't even keep ourselves together. Can't you? you did, like nothing. Nothing oh, is man. is smooth sailing. Eh, whatever. That's life, that's, right? That's showbiz, baby. <laughs> But while Bobby gets his shit sorted, uh, we'll just let the, the, the audience know. I'm excited because I'm going off to Disney World tomorrow uh, from the time of recording. I'm going to go spend four days there. Well, five days total. One day kind of just succumb to tr traveling and stuff like that. Sure, but we're spending sure. a day in each of the mi four major parks. I'm uh, going to spend my actual birthday at uh, Galaxy's Edge. Uh, Ooh, so that will be a lot baby. of fun. Building out my first lightsaber. <sighs> Oof nice oh, I, if i ever get there which now you know it's i i i went the second time i went i've been twice to disney guys, world guys, what are you what is guys what, guys I'm struggling here yeah no, we can i can see tell that. yeah i know oh. <laughs> i'm struggling here guys <laughs> go on dave no it's fine this is uh this is distracting in all the best ways um the second time I went, uh, this is before, I think it was like close to when, like, is it Animal Kingdom? 
There yeah. we go. It was close to when that first opened up. So it was like the biggest attraction at the time it was like, oh, it's we didn't go to it because I think it was just super busy or whatever. And anyways, I went not when I was like five years old. I went when we were in, I want to say it was in grade nine or grade eight. It was the best. Yeah, it was the best. And I've been dying to go back since. And now that Disney owns most of the entertainment world at this point, there's even more to do. Like you said, like Star Wars is a perfect example. Like. I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt. I would love, I would love to go. I would, you know, as long as you have a Star Wars shirt, that means you love Star Wars, right? Isn't that I think so. I think that's yeah. the, the, the qualifier. Color. Yeah. If you have a Star Wars shirt, you're a fucking nerd. That's all. <laughs> I'll take yeah. it. That's fine. You're only <laughs> cool if you have like 17 uh, Final Fantasy seven statues of the Buster Sword <laughs> in your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, what a cool dude. What a cool man. Man. I have so Steve, much garbage in here. <laughs> See? <laughs> He calls it garbage. <laughs> I mean, it is. <laughs> like, look, if I stand up, all I have to do is stand up, reach, and find more. garbage. Well, it actually is garbage. The call came to me. Oh shit! The box is all oh, beaten wow. up and everything. Thanks. What the that. hell? That fucking suck. Oh my that's god! But then yeah, that sucks. Boy, you got your boy Cloud right there. Oh, I like that. Those are the uh, the like the basically the awesome. the figures from the original. Yeah, they look like the. The sprites or whatever from the original version that's cool of final that fantasy 7 cool. if anyone has not seen it um i mean if you don't know that nice. game i mean shame sorry shame on you sorry shame, shame no, on no. me <laughs> shame on me <laughs> dave why don't you talk about some games that you do know about since you're oh, here that i do know about yeah oh, that you've been playing okay, okay. Um, one of them that the, the review actually just went up uh, a couple days ago uh, at consolecreatures.com was a game that I didn't really have an eye on until it just released and I saw it pop up on a couple of my social media feeds. Um, it's called Kudzu, K-U-D-Z-U, um, which I learned in the process of playing this game and researching it that Kudzu is an actual plant. Uh, it's yep. like a, a, a mm. Japanese, uh, or at least I think it originated in in japan um a weed and it is one of those not a weed but like a, a a vine i guess you could call it but it just perennial vine is what perennial Google, vine there yeah. it is yeah um, but it's one me. of those ones that just like takes over like you let it grow yeah. and it will just you know envelop your whole yard or you know things like that so they use that idea to create a game where you are playing an actual Game Boy game. So the developers, yeah, the developers created a game that will work on the physical cartridge and hardware of the original Game Boy. So I played this on Switch because I don't have the actual um, Game Boy anymore. I would love to, but I left my batteries in my original Game Boy for too long and it the acid ate oh, away no. at it. So yeah, yeah. I have my I have my Game Boy Vance, so technically it would still work if I had the physical cartridge. It would still work on my on my GBA. But um, but even though I played this game on Switch, it plays the same way it would on the hardware. That's so Look, cool. Yeah, it looks like it. It has that sort of you know grayish green from the original Game Boy. Um, it sounds just like it. When you're playing it, you know, the if things are moving a little too fast, there's too many enemies, there's a little bit of a slowdown, maybe. Um, the enemies will blink every once in a while. It's sort of like, you know, uh, skipped frames from that era of games of the NES and early Game Boy and stuff. All of that stuff looks, sounds, feels, plays just like an old Game Boy game. Just yep. like down to the, 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 the details of if you leave a screen and come back, some stuff will reset, like mm -hmm. things like that. Like just, and that's used as even like a, a, a puzzle to, and a, a way to solve puzzles sometimes. The game encourages you to sort of quote unquote break it or use tactics like that, that you may, that may have been a bug in the, in the past, but now they kind of use it a little bit as a feature sometimes. So that's kind of cool. Um, but essentially it is a top down old school Zelda game. Like if, like, the, the a Zelda game that would be on Game Boy Color or the original Game Boy, that's what this is. Um, you are a gardener, and the master gardener has gone missing, and you need to find him. He is lost in the kudzu. That's basically wow. what it is. And the kudzu has like this strange power that you sort of figure out that you know maybe is making some of the the creatures and the animals um you know act differently. So that's why some creatures attack you, some don't. 
is because some of them has have like you know gone a little crazy gone a little loopy that's the excuse for animals coming after you not just for the reason of hey we need enemies here yeah. let's just toss you you know bugs that attack you or something or plants why are plants attacking you well because the kudzu's taken over it's kind of weird and wacky and things like that so yeah so it is like just take like instead of finding a shield instead of finding another sword instead of finding another way to use your sword you're finding a garden hoe you're finding a machete you're finding boots that will help you walk across like spiky areas to reach other areas you couldn't get to before all of that themed in, in this sort of like garden type of adventure, but plays very much like those old school Zelda games. And it was so cool to play because even though I had it on my switch, it just felt like I was playing my game boy yeah. and even more. And honestly, even more so than the game boy games that are on switch online, because those are emulated. And in a lot of ways, sort of, uh, tweaked a bit so that mm -hmm. you don't have you know frame flashes and things like that or at least as much as this one is meant to have that and it operates like that on purpose to make it feel as old school as possible and if you're in the mood for something like that and you have an itch to play a game that you haven't picked up in 30 to 35 years <laughs> that's what this yeah. game feels like and it's amazing it's so fun it's way longer than i thought it would be i thought because of the way that they sort of worked within limiting what the game can do based on it has to work on the original hardware i thought oh okay it's gonna be i don't know let's say three to four hours something like that not that zelda games are only three or four hours but i, I just sort of suspected that this sure. was like at least double that it took me to get oh, wow. through and i and i did end up you know getting a couple of extra things like for my health and my items and things like that that kind of you know i backtracked a little bit to go to areas that i wouldn't necessarily have to but it does encourage you to do it. It takes extra time because there's no fast travel. There's just, you got to backtrack your way through it. And uh, there's some shortcuts that you unlock. So you don't have to go through like four different regions backwards just to get back to sort of like your main uh, town or whatever. Um, but it was, it was honestly, it was great. It is one of the best new retro games that you could possibly find uh, in, in the last couple of years. It is so much fun um it even plays in the four by three aspect ratio right in the menu you can go and pick what your background is on the sides um <sighs> i love that that yeah that's so, so cool. similar to, yeah similar to uh i don't know if the nes version does this but like the mini snes you can kind of pick if you want it to be like wood on the yep. side or black you can do that i chose to pick like the really old school tv so oh, it looks cool. like you're with like the wood panel the wood and paneling the, yeah yeah and the fake the sort of quote-unquote metal bars across it which was basically just gray plastic um that's what i chose i was like ah oh, this kind of feels right it feels like i'm playing it on an old school tv um <laughs> and uh down to those little details it does a lot of really cool things you have a bunch of different like areas and you can call them biomes there's like a haunted house and there's the kudzu and then there's like the a haunted forest and then there's like a castle and there's all these different areas you can go into and it is so good it's not expensive i think it's like 10 or 15 bucks or something 100% worth it, even at full price. So um, Kudzu, K-U-D-Z-U. Um, it is awesome if you're in the mood for something like that. And uh, yeah, it sort of scratched this itch at a perfect time. I couldn't put it down for a solid few days and I got my way through it and I loved it. So no, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at, uh, well, I'm going through its Kickstarter right now mm -hmm. and to get the actual like physical cartridge as, as long and like with the ROM and stuff like that, it's like 35 bucks. And yeah. That, that seems like a pretty good deal to me. I'm 100% um, considering it because then I can actually play this on my GBA. Like, it would be yeah. so much fun to do that. It's the same game, sure, but, like, I don't know. I just... Aesthetically, you know, like, popping in the uh, the cartridge. And yeah, like, yeah, it has a box and a manual. That. Oh, that's that's the other thing, too. So when you, if you buy that physical one or you get a hold of one, um, comes with an actual manual. They have a box that is mm -hmm. just like a Game Boy box. In the game, in the digital version, where I played it on Switch, um, the manual is included in it in a digital way and you can yes. flip through the pages and stuff and look through the manual it has like a little like prologue to the story it uh has all the like little descriptions of the of the characters or some of them that you're going to meet and stuff really really cool detail of stuff that we just don't get anymore yep. that is not even just the gameplay it's all those little extra details that uh really sort of felt right 
Authentic, um, yeah. Authentic, exactly. So yeah. it, it was it, it was a ton that, of fun. That the cartridge does work with analog pocket as well. So oh, there you go. So if anyone has analog pocket, even perfect. Yeah, that's great. I I've considered I've considered an analog pocket, but uh I haven't pulled the trigger on that. I yet, know, me so. too. It's, it's yeah. the shipping cost for me. It's a huge thing for us here, man. You buy you buy something from the states and it's like an item like that, like a like an actual valuable item that you want to make sure, like, oh, maybe yeah. you buy insurance on it, maybe don't, whatever. Either way, the shipping is like usually ridiculous. It's like it's it's hard to justify that. Yeah, I think to get a shipped here, it's like 350 almost 400 dollars i was like nah that's jesus that's i i want one don't get me wrong yeah but but you can do a lot bad. with that money yeah i mean i still have my original game boy color my original game boy it's like yeah eh. so then eh, you're probably okay yeah, yeah no this yeah. thing honestly that that physical version it's probably being shipped from the states as well but right um you know you pay the extra 15 or 20 what it might ship that that uh, that i could justify for sure for a game mm -hmm. like this for sure um so if anyone's considering it and they do have a pocket or they do have their game boys i honestly think that the extra cost for the physical one is is worth it especially if you're a collector and, and, and want to have stuff like that um i'm uh yeah i'm mulling over that option even though i've already played the game i think it's great it, it is a cool option i i like that more studios now are going back to like previous generations and be like no we're gonna make an n64 cartridge for a game or now game boy um it's cool stuff i like it yeah yeah um that's mostly what i've been playing what about you steve what else what else you've been anything you've been uh, hacking uh away at for or? me uh so <laughs> after last week bobby and i we did our review of the fallout series we yes talked about a spoiler free all eight episodes of that so if you're interested to hear what our thoughts were go check that episode out but that being said i got caught with the fallout bug in a big way after that i was like i need yeah. i need back in i need back in and what i initially did was i installed fallout 3 okay and so i was like okay i can go back to this game i'm pretty sure that i have achievements or something something that i could do to like justify a new playthrough and stuff like that mm. okay so you're and, thinking about certain fresh yeah well not not necessarily but i was like okay if i can go back to uh, an area in the dlc and kind of like mop some stuff up depending on like oh, where okay. i was because it's been so long since i even knew where i was in that specific save so i was like okay we'll install it test the water see where i am and kind of you know take it from there so to speak yeah. uh yeah. so i installed it and went into play and i was like oh i have literally i think it was one achievement left and Whoa. it was to just it, it was to um hack 50 computers and in oh. my head i was like there's no way in hell i even want to bother with this like it, <laughs> it, like there like i don't want to just see like play through this game and be like oh let me just find these computers like to me that right because they could be fun. anywhere right that kind of thing like it's yeah. it's just not it's just not what i want to like focus in on if there were a bit more of like story or collectibles or stuff stuff like that i was like okay so that one's not going to be the one for me i had already replayed follow new vegas last year or maybe late in the year before it's still very fresh in my mind i did an entire playthrough right. so i was like okay i'm not going to do that one and then Bethesda was like, okay, for Fallout 4, we're doing the next gen upgrade next month. It's coming out soon. I was like, okay, I guess it's not Fallout 4 either because uh, I'm going <laughs> to wait for this 60 frames per second upgrade and all like the little bells and whistles they're adding. So that left me with one option Fallout 76, a game I begrudgingly stayed away from because I was going to say, you sound so excited. <laughs> well, initially, no, no, go, ahead. It, it was, go ahead. It's just the, it, way, the way you said it. It was like, so it was just off <laughs> off putting for me because I was like, yeah. I just don't really want to spend my time in like an MMO. I don't want to like I had heard nothing but like sour things about the game since launch. There was the tumultuous launch with the, the plastic bag, duffel bag thing. Uh -huh. There's a whole thing like everything that surrounded Fallout 76, despite all the upgrades and DLCs that Bethesda put out. I was like, is, is this even a game that I should be considering? So I went in lowest of low expectations and within probably two hours i was like oh this is a legitimately fun ass game like i'm having a ton of fun playing this but i'm playing it in the most non like the ways that you're just not even supposed to play this this game is supposed to be hey group up with other people build your base i'm like no nah, i don't want any of that stuff give me the pure <laughs> distilled fallout experience and that's what i'm doing right now 
Okay, so you're you're playing it as if you were playing Fallout three or four. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I haven't done like I've I just checked right before uh, we we started this episode uh, at my progress. I think I'm about seven hours in and I haven't done a lick of the base building other than what you're supposed to for the missions. Like there are some missions that like go to your base and build this one thing. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'll go do that. Like a necessary checklist sort of. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, But aside from that, haven't done that. Uh, any of the base building, I haven't really played with any people in, in the way that the game is meant to. Uh, you do get uh, XP bonuses from joining groups, but you could be on one side of the map. I can be on the other doing totally two different things. Like you're not tethered to mission progress, to going inside of a building or anything. You could pl- still play the game totally solo. Oh, it's just okay. that on the bottom of your screen, it says, okay, depending on how many people are in your group, you're getting a two times bonus, three or four times bonus. Is there, is there, um, I know it's sort of like a MMO sort of persistent world type of thing. Is, mm-hmm. is it kind of like Diablo where things scale as well? If you have a bigger thing, do you know about no. that? If you have a bigger group? Okay. No. Well, that, uh, it scales to you specifically. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's actually pretty cool then because yeah. you, that adds to the fact that you can, be a decent distance apart and it'd be totally fine as opposed to being sworn by too many or too many strong enemies kind of thing if you just happen to be in a group and stuff exactly yeah so every enemy i come across they're all still you know late 20 early 30 level but then you know the other day i was playing it it, it with someone within the group and they were level uh 1200 i was like okay okay you're no life in this game and i kind of respect that (laughs) but at the same time i just don't want that on me you know i don't want the level 1200 enemies coming at me so i was glad that you know it's all just uh reflective of your level so that was cool so at no point now seven hours in i'm still very early on uh respectively but do i feel hampered or do i feel like i'm not getting an experience based on playing in this online parameter that the game kind of wanted me to play and i'm just out there scavenging uh there is more of a focus on eating and drinking water than there ever is in the core games which so far i don't really find it a hindrance every so often it's just like okay i'll go into my backpack and there there are so many resources whether it's food or water or um materials to like cook food with that Mm -hmm. i never feel like oh no now i have to like stop having the fun i'm having just so i can go out and like scavenge for food and stuff like that it all feels like it's like it's a natural um progression in in that regard so to my original point it feels like i'm actually just having that core fallout experience that i wanted Mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just forcing my way through it. <laughs> like, is that it, good though? Like is that I think or does so. it feel like a chore? Because no, it, it, no, it doesn't. It, it would feel good. more like a chore if it was if there were those uh, detractors of oh no, sure. you have to build the base, you have to go out and play with other people to to go raid or stuff like that. Like so far, I'm just doing the straight the the core missions and stuff like that i'm popping achievements i'm out there defeating enemies i'm doing like um kind of like destiny there are in-game events that will persistently last for like 20 minutes that all players from you know the different in within the map can come help on and i think that's cool and then as soon as like like the diablo way of doing it like that kind of like what yes exactly okay yeah Yeah. i like those Uh, are fun yeah yeah and as soon as it's over you get your reward and then you just leave and you're like all right see ya just yeah cool uh, the other thing uh, that I just wanted to know was that, like, so far, everyone seems pretty chill. The, that's, the thing, I was going to ask, yeah. Yeah, I, I think everyone that I've talked to, it just seems like there's just this overall understanding that the Fallout community within Fallout 76 is super nice and chill. Like, there's Good. no one griefing. They also have some some blockades in there. So just so if someone wants to grief you and start shooting at you, they're doing like minimum damage. They're doing mm. like 0.1 off your HP. You have to return fire for them for it to like unlock full damage. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Like a like a standoff. You have to create a standoff sort of. <laughs> like, kind of. Yeah. Like a wild like, wild west uh, gunslinger in order for it to do any damage. <laughs> yeah. Because I I, I I wasn't on microphone and I happened to come across these like three people and one guy just kept shooting at me. I was like, I don't understand if this guy's just trying to be like an asshole or if he right. wants me to like join his group or do something specific. I'm not 
I'm not used to the terms and conditions of this game whatsoever. I'm just kind of going yeah. with the flow. What's the what's the communication like when when mics are off? Exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so he kept like shooting at me, and there was like an on screen notification of like if you shoot back, this is it, it's all it's no it's all, all hands up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like this is this is a battle. Then and I was like, I'm not I'm not about this. I don't want the smoke. So I I just kind of there are in-game emotes so i just kind of waved to him he waved back and then i just wanted to buy on my way i was like I oh, okay all right you stay over that's, there you do your thing i'm doing mine like i'm just it's an interesting way of doing fun. it yeah yeah that's an interesting way of doing it the fact that any damage happens is interesting i mean i know it's very minimal but um, it would be more of a waste on his resources and ammunition to continue firing at me in the hopes gotcha. that he just ends up killing me somehow then it would mm -hmm. be and level. I guess if you die, you lose everything you're carrying. Like it's that kind of like what would happen if you if you shot him and you guys fought and he and he took I think you, you out. Just or vice versa. You just you just respawn at your base or something like I, that. Like, again, I don't know if there's something different with PvP, but I know right. it, with the PvE, like the normal enemy, is you just reload. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Like just like just on the uh, back a little bit on in that area yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean that sounds pretty good. I mean, does it, um, does it play like you remember three and four? Everything, felt? yeah. Does it's it feels the same. I mean, the story objectively just isn't as sure. good because it is more of a free form, yeah. very surface level. Just to kind of, it, it, it's to service the gameplay, service a a playground essentially. Other than that, I mean, I'm I'm just there for the sounds, the music. You got your pit boy, you got the radios there, and everything. I'm mm. tossing on the tunes. I'm, I'm, you know, defeating ghouls and stuff like that. The enemy variations are kind of lackluster. It's all just, oh, it's a ghoul with a, a gun, or it's this other enemy with a gun. Uh, Giant it, cockroach. Uh, you know, yeah, like, it's just very, very minimal compared okay. to like a like not a, a ton of variety. Yeah. yeah okay but that being said um, i mean it is scratching an itch right now which is nice okay as far as it feeling like three and four does it have the um what's the the slowdown aim at the different body right. or uh vats that Vat, is yeah. that there because I, I i feel like you can't pull that off when it's so it's there in a way it's only okay. there it, it doesn't really slow down the gameplay yeah because it, it kind of can't right like exactly all yeah. it does is basically give you it gives you that same um breakdown of the the enemy body of like head arm torso and the percentage that you can hit it right all it is is basically just showing you okay so if you select the arm and shoot right now you're gonna hit it 95 percent. but okay honestly it's just easier just to hip fire or just aim down sights like okay. it, the, yeah. aiming is very forgiving in this game versus uh, like core fallout games where i feel like the vast system is definitely there because the shooting mechanics are pretty pretty rough around the edges here mm -hmm. it's not great it's not even starfield levels i think starfield was bethesda's way of like showing that they can do shooting mechanics yeah it was good yeah I, it, was, it, it felt really good this isn't it but it's better it's okay. better than it has been before okay bobby have you played this game i have not i have zero no. time in this game no I... I'm, going to, I'm going to play it eventually but um no i was waiting for fallout london but uh they had to mm. delay it so yeah, just kind of hoping that they figure out what's going on with that once this next gen Fallout Four patch launches, and then I can kind of pivot because like I've I've been interested in Fallout London since like they announced it, and it looks really good. I mean, they basically made a brand new Fallout game. So like, really, what more could I ask for? It's like it's it's basically scratching that itch that I want. New Fallout game, obviously not official, but like it looks official enough to the sure. point where it, it seems like it it'll be a great little uh, pivot from the next fallout game, which I hope comes within the next like seven to 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, a mod, yeah. that's a modern estimate. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, I fully expect to be playing this in like 15 years at this point. <laughs> it feels like that. Yeah, maybe 15. I'd say, yeah, let's say 15. 15. Just, just set your expectations low. And then when you're surprised, yeah. even better. If if we get it at all, I'll there be happy. we go. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. If it, if it even exists a few we'll years get from now, yeah. Final Fantasy Seven Part Three before the next Bethesda. Oh man! Game. Actually, you know what? The last of these course. these two yeah. happened quicker than I thought they would. I mean, I guess they were sort of somewhat made well, in tandem in, in some ways, but like 
took them yeah, three seven. years to make part two. So that kind of tells you like they it's pretty good. It's actually how pretty good. It is. Yeah, that's yeah. really good. Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm considering this. I I didn't I don't love the Fallout games. I think I've said in the past because mm -hmm. of the engine that they use. Sure. But if I'm gonna definitely jump into four and like you said, Bobby, the sort of next gen update when that comes up, I think that's end of April. So it's really just a few days away. Um, I don't remember the exact day, but la last couple of days of April it comes in. So I'm, I want to. I already I own it for Steam. I want to try and I'm gonna reinstall it at that time and give give it a go. Um, I don't have Game Pass at the moment, but I guess I could always give 76 a try. But I think four is so close. I already own it. I think I'll just sort of jump in and try that and see sure. how. A lot of it seems to be more more visual than it is anything else, but I think there's other things. I, I can't remember exactly all the different different things that they're adding, but it makes they're, me interested at least. They're adding like some cosmetic stuff from the show, yeah. which is cool. Like, uh, but it's it's nothing major. It's just an excuse yeah. to re-download it. I have it. I installed it again just to pop in. I'm mm -hmm. right now. I'm just gonna kind of casually play 76 whenever I have that itch again. Uh, whenever it pops up because yeah that show dave have you seen the show yet um i have watched two episodes so far and um, what do you think so far i think it's great i think it's absolutely great i uh i think um I, so i'm watching it with with my wife who only knows of it because i've told her what fallout is that it's a yeah. series of games all that kind of some stuff that i recognize i haven't played all the games i've played honestly i've mostly played fallout 2 more than any other fallout game and it's been a long time since i played that so i think i have more time in fallout 2 i'm assuming than i did it even in four i never really played three i played only a little bit of new vegas so like i'm not the deepest into the bethesda worlds all that much because of the engine that mm -hmm. these games are in so um i think that um <laughs> sorry <laughs> my wife's looking for the dog hi I hope she, I hope she finds it. She she finds it. But the dog's beside me. Would you like the dog? Hi, come get the Mystery dog. Mystery solved. Hi. There you go. <laughs> um, I've watched Fallout with her before in the last couple of days, and it's yeah. it's hit and miss depending on on what's going on in the first couple episodes. I think is that right? Yes, sort of. Yeah, yeah she's not sure. Yeah. Not one hundred percent sure. <laughs> um, I you know I I think some of it comes down to the um. Some of it's the violence, some of it's, you know, um, not really knowing what the story is yet. Like, it, yeah. I really like it so far. I, I don't think it's a home run in the first two episodes, but I do think it's really good. And what I do like the most about it is they're not trying to copy some story from the games as far as I know. It's just, here's the world. Let's let's talk about a few different uh, a few different perspectives on what's going on. And that is cool. I like that. I didn't even know it was from different perspectives. I had no idea. I thought it was just following one main character, and it, which would have been fine with me. It, sure. Tell tell a different story. Tell your own story. That that's cool. I had no idea that that there was at least in these first couple episodes. I had no idea that that's how this stuff is working. So, um, yeah, I like it so far. I like it. You're so in far. for a wild ride. I'm excited to hear your thoughts when you when you finish it. Whether or not you're on the episode when that time comes, but I want to hear your thoughts. Do yeah, you, no, I will definitely the let DMs you guys know. talk to me about it because yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're 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 gonna keep going together. My wife and I are gonna watch more together, but um, but it's a matter of when we have time to sit down and, and watch it for yeah. an hour and stuff. Because the episode first two episodes are over an hour each, or at least the first one was definitely over an hour. So like. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta find some time. Um, yeah. but we'll we're gonna get through it. We're gonna get through it. So it's cool. it's been very good so far, though. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Bobby, what have you been playing lately? Guys, we can't talk about it. It's um it's a very woke game. So, uh oh yeah, we're, I've been playing the woke games. I've been uh -oh. just been a wokey. I'm so woke, I'm arisen. That that's what I've been saying lately. Ooh. Yeah. Wow. Also, I hate that word so much. I I hate it. Which one? Woke. <laughs> well, woke. I woke, hate it. Yeah. Well, it's lost it. all meaning. It has no meaning anymore. Jiminy no, Jillikers. Jiminy Jillikers. Jiminy Jillikers. <laughs> lots all meaning. I don't. <laughs> no, exactly. Um, that was a great poll. <laughs> I only. I can only pull the Simpsons from like the mid '90s. Oh, so. of course. I, I. The golden era. <laughs> yeah, really, and really an excellent episode too. So. Yeah. <laughs> If you quote New Simpsons, I, I judge you because like there's nothing good about it. Is there either. anything to quote? Actually, no. You know what? I don't know. Last week's I did watch last week's episode. It was actually really good. I, one more Mar 
Marge Gold Steve as an Uber driver. He's in the new last couple of seasons have actually been like old Simpsons. I will give them that, but it's okay. not affordable. Right. But last That's week's episode yeah. was probably one of the best ones in like years. Okay. I'll All believe right. you. So <laughs> watch The Simpsons. Um, so what is this woke game? Uh, this woke game is called Harold Halibut. And I'm sure you guys oh, have yeah. seen it. I have. It is it's like woke? it's so woke because oh. basically you know, <laughs> it's a Wes Anderson mashup that kind of feels like Rapture meets uh, Wes Anderson. And that's basically why it's he's woke. not involved in this game, is he? Did I miss that? No, but I mean, oh, it okay. feels like something exactly might as from well him, be. Yeah. Okay. Great. Howard, Howard okay. I'm all in there. Yeah. <laughs> it is so woke Anderson. Woke. You know what I'm saying? Woke, woke, woke Anderson. We're going to go with that. <laughs> But no, it's really cool. I'm sure you guys have seen like the trailers yeah. in the past couple of yeah. months. Yeah, and... I mean, it the, visually, it's it's crazy. It, it looks... it, it's like it's like a stop motion video game. Basically, comes it looks like a movie come to life, and you're playing it. It's interactive, but but basically, like you know, you're this character named Harold, and your ship. It's an interstellar ship that uh, left Earth like two or three hundred years in the past, and you've been generally you know you're probably of the generations that live on the ship it's kind of like a fall it's like a vault from fallout basically yeah. but it happens to be in space yeah yeah exactly and then uh basically what happens is sometime in the past the ship crash lands into an ocean planet and basically they're stuck underwater and they just kind of live their lives underwater so you basically it's just Harold going through day-to-day -day, his day-to-day -day life just doing like very menial tasks and uh, interacting with the residents of the ship and why i love this game is it's just you know it's like a short game it's about 15 hours um it's very chill like you're just basically going interacting with people it's kind of a point and click game where you kind of go about the ship you complete tasks for people your your job is basically like a like an air, a handyman for the ships so you go around fixing like leaky pipes or you know you help look at the resident scientists and stuff like that and there's not really any major goal it's just you know living the life of Harold where you're going and talking to say um you can go to like the sports bar you can go to a sports bar you can go to um there's like little there's basically it's like a little town like you just go you can go to the local shops you can see like some of the local uh, vendors and you talk to them mm -hmm. and then it was in the trailer but then you encounter some aliens who are very very strange and they're not they're not benevolent they're just they're very I actually have the perfect word for it I actually put it in my in my i had to look th i had to look this word up because it was perfect for these aliens <laughs> because honestly they're like the weirdest things like they don't really care that you exist they they acknowledge you and they're just like they let you live your life you know your life on this planet and it's it's it's, it's just a weird game but it's so introspective of these characters and you know their situation like being stuck under sea on an alien planet and they're, they're just content with that so i mean if you want to play it like i really suggest it but like it's it's a really slow place game like you really have to want to play this game because it, it will kind of just slow down and you really have to push through it sometimes because it like I said, there's not really any action. There's very little. There's no collecting. There's no items to collect. It's just social connections, and you're talking to people. Interesting. And it, it's very weird. Well, and that's, then that's sort of old school too, right? Like that's the the point and click adventures. Like you know, a lot of uh, yes, there was there's an overarching story and everything, but you're collecting things if you do it all in order to like solve a puzzle to get to the right. next area or something or talk to the well, right person that's as far as that stuff went and like lucas arts games and stuff like that double like, fine yeah double yeah. fine and stuff but ultimately you were just kind of around in a lot of those as well like you're saying um it's, know, it's, it feels kind of old school it, it's bit. really cool i mean like if you like wes anderson's it's like the fantastic mr fox kind of it kind of reminds oh, me oh yes yes please. absolutely yes please so, <laughs> yeah so the aliens are called the flumulum and okay. <laughs> the word I looked for, because I had to find this word, because the way they act to you, it's called lays fair, which basically means like. Oh. Actually, I, I'm sorry, God, I don't know this word. I just had to find something because I was trying. To, I was writing my review, and I was like, well, "How do I like, you know, how do you describe how it? Yeah. How do I describe these aliens? Because basically, what what they do is, you know, they let you live on their planet and follow your own path. Basically, yeah, yeah. was lays fair, which basically means like, th th like 
they not they acknowledge your existence, but they don't interfere with you. So they just right, they're just, like, they're just like whatever, have, hang out, yeah, hang out with us, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 have you know, have at it, and then do what your thing is. But it's just cool. Like I, I kind of expected one thing, and then it came to be something else. But like it was just a really like serene game. Like it was very different than what I expected. But I mean, I loved it. I ended up loving. it. I think it's a great game. I mean, it took Slow Bros about fifteen years to make this game. Just because it was labor intensive, like everything right. was done in stop motion, and it you can see that you can see it's clearly a passion project for these people. They loved what they did, and like the end result is this beautiful game that it, it really feels like Wes Anderson, and that's the biggest compliment I can give Slow Bros. Like they really knew how to capture what he does well in his movies, mm-hmm. and they brought it to life in in Harold Halibut and. I'm just shocked that it, I'm not hearing a lot of people talk about it. Like it launched, I think it's last this week. week. This week. On I'm Tuesday, like, don't yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. talking about it. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it is unfortunate. I mean, I I had been taken away just because like my focus has been on a different game uh, that I'm yeah. reviewing right now. Otherwise, I'd be all over this. I love Wes Anderson. I love Claymation. I just love the artistry yeah. that has to go into it so and and to me this also feels like very very akin to the passion project like the visual passion project of something like cuphead where a studio mm-hmm. just commits and they're like we have so much respect for this one genre of art we're going to commit an entire video game to replicating it in its yeah. th- true authenticity that i'm like oh i'm I, I have to at least try it, whether or not it's going to end up being for me is another story, but I have to seek it out and just kind of give them my my due and just appreciate it from a, if, in, in that way that rather than appreciate it from afar. I, I feel like the very least I can do, being it it's on Game Pass, is install it and try it out. That too, yeah. And, and in a way, it's almost like, I mean, I think um, Fallout maybe has has put a little bit of a cloud is the wrong way to I say it, so. but a little bit of a cloud over over yeah. some smaller games at the moment because of the show. Yeah. And then, oh, everybody's talking about the Absolutely. show, they, you know, all that. Yeah. So I think that's part of it. No fault of this game. No fault of Fallout, really. It just is yeah. what it is. But like also because it's on Game Pass kind of points to, oh, it's easy to scroll over it or it's easy to say, oh, I'll, I'll I'll play it later. So like there's a little bit of a disadvantage to having that kind of setup every once yeah. in a while. And maybe this game is that. And sure, you know, it's easier to pay for a subscription for some people and try a game out to see if you like it than to flat out buy something for 50 to $90. But in some ways, because of the way that it is currently available, it's easy to o- not overlook it, but sort of kind of forget if that makes sense. Um, it does, like you're yeah. saying, Steve. Like I know you're you're busy with some with something else, but it doesn't mean that you know something else wouldn't have come up anyways, and this would have been number three on your list or two, you know, sure. something like that. So, and it's unfortunate because this game, just looking at trailers, just looking at it, looks incredible. It's not even just the fact that it's claymation; it's the lighting, the colors, mm-hmm. the artistry, like the the set designs of it. It yeah. all definitely feels like a big budget claymation film yep and you're just you're interacting with it and that's amazing and i think all of that kind of goes into the potential of it just gaining popularity by virtue of word of mouth i think that this Mm -hmm. game will inevitably see a, a whole bunch of attraction when people start actually playing it and start posting screenshots and small videos and stuff like that because it does have such a unique vision or visual style that people will be like, Oh, Oh, that's the claymation game. Oh, what is that? And kind of, you know, spur the conversation spur. The, and then of course it's all going to lead back into, Hey, it's on game pass. So you might as well yes. try it yeah. out. So maybe a slow burn, but I, I think it has potential. I think uh, maybe, you know, a couple of weeks when the fallout hype dies down, people will start, you know, leaning into this game a little more. I hope so anyways, because it sounds good, Bobby. No, it yeah. sounds it it sounds good, but like it it it's something you I, I feel like you have to experience. Like it's just one of those games where I, you only talk about it so much. It's actually playing it, and and like I said, that influence from Wes Anderson is exactly what I, I like telling people because because it I love his movies. So like having that that notion in the back of your head, remembering that it's it's it feels it's clearly inspired by him. So play yeah. it, 
keep that in mind. But yeah, like there are some cool things. Like you, you kind of have to piece together what happened to Earth like all those years ago. Cool. And then you're yeah. dealing with what happened. And then you're dealing with you know discovering that there's actually aliens on the planet that you're stuck on, and like where that goes. And it does some cool things. It's just it's a very like I said, it's just it's a glacier pace game. So you'll have to just you know push through that because that that kind of is what comes off is like the worst aspects just because i'm reviewing a game that's the opposite of that it's so fast paced and like it, it's yeah. so actiony and then you go and play this game and it's like oh and and sometimes i one of those aren't for everybody i both styles right like you maybe right. you yeah. don't want a super fast paced and twitch based sort of game or maybe you don't want uh, the one that is slower and more focused on character and things like that. Yeah. Or maybe you just don't want that right now. You mm -hmm. know, like maybe that's part of what it is. Um, yeah. This this is one that that caught my eye when it was first sort of announced. I don't know if it was at the Game Awards or wherever it was. I can't um, when we first sort of saw a trailer of it. It was last year, but I don't remember exactly. It could have been at the Xbox showcase or, mm -hmm. or whatever, um, or in the summer or something like that. But like, yeah, now is just not the time for me to have Game Pass at the moment. But when I get it back, this is the game that's going to be on the list. It's it's on my like my queue, um, but yeah. I can't access it if I have Game Pass at the moment because I currently am not not paying for it. But I will um, probably later in the year, later in the summer. So, um, yeah, what? Where's, yeah, I, I was just yeah. about to say you you sparked a thought <laughs> into my head, and I do wonder if because I, I, again I can't remember where this game was announced. If it was at the Xbox Showcase, I I wonder if it was because because it was announced last year that the announcement kind of got muddled up with South of Midnight, which is Compulsion's new game, which mm. kind of also has similar vibes where it's not claymation per se, but it does have that more clay kind of art style to it. It, it has like similar tones or a visual style to uh, Harold Halibut. And I just wonder if people were like, oh, is are they the same game? Which one? Which one's sure. which? Blah, blah, blah. I see that. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, you just saying Xbox. I was like, oh yeah, that's when South Midnight was released, and then yeah, it, maybe I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Ten point um, on that time. Yeah, yeah. I I uh, before uh, before I got to get out of here uh, in a moment. I'm sure we'll wrap we'll up wrap in a few up. minutes. Yeah. I just really want to mention that no matter what type of game you're in the mood for at the moment, this sparked my my memory a little bit. If you have any chance to play Star Fox 64, <laughs> just play it, people, because it is one okay. of the best games ever. It's just, I'm just good. saying I played it for my other podcast. I played it for remember 64 and have an episode on it. Uh, but it doesn't matter whether I did or not. This game is just so goddamn good. It's not even like one of the best games on the console on the 64. It is just one of the best games Nintendo has ever made. I don't, I, I'm not saying that just, just because I just played it and had a good like it's just so much fun and it's so easy to pick up and play all you need is an hour to get through like the hardest uh sort of route that you can take in it um it's just it's so great the fact that like a rail shooter essentially is that good just blows my mind and it's been 26 years 27 years at this point that that game was made it's on switch online but regardless like it still plays well on that i think um but yeah. uh, it feels really good with the 64 mm -hmm. controller. Just going to say it's meant for that controller somehow. Um, just feels a little bit better than it does at least handheld on Switch. So um, yeah, Star Fox 64, everybody, just play it. If you haven't, or if it's been a while, give yourself an hour and just whatever route you end up taking on the map, play Star Fox 64. It's incredible. Do a barrel roll while you're at it. Do a barrel roll, uh, do a somersault, um, you know, save Slippy and uh and hang uh, uh fo follow falco on his his path to the uh, mission accomplished area of each right. stage yeah. <laughs> perfect yeah well that about wraps it up for this episode we'll be back next week with a very special episode uh a review for stellar blade uh we're putting together a very nice panel for that getting some audience questions as well so stay tuned for that one but we appreciate you checking out this episode dave people wanted to connect with you online where could they do so? Well, you can listen to Star Fox 64 and uh, remember 64 if you want to. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but otherwise, um, uh, Dave Petro across the board on social media. That's where you can find me. 
and uh and at consolecreatures.com as i uh review a couple more games that's uh, gonna be playing and writing and reviewing as much as i can as things get more and more hectic and down to the the uh the baby deadline but uh yeah that's that's where you'll find me countdown to baby time start a we get i get like a clock on the screen clock? yeah and next yeah. time i come on we should do that yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get i'll get the i'll get the date the and, I'll, and i'll put the, the clock in. yeah like a doomsday clock <laughs> we just have it going every week it'll just be a, a dirty diaper yeah just but with the clock beside it yeah here we go we'll see we're thinking now that's yeah. awesome Beautiful. yeah uh Beautiful. bobby Beautiful. where where can people keep up with you on the line you can find me at bpashalidis and consolecreatures.com and all our links are in my link tree. Awesome. Nice. Easy, easy, yes. And as for me, you can find me across the internet at svigvari. Uh, we appreciate you checking out the episode. Subscribe to the fees. Do all those, you know, like, share, subscribe. It means a lot to us and keeps uh, the show growing. It means a lot to us. But until next week, we'll see you. Bye.